We've been on this massive journey creating an awesome epic gaming board and a whole bunch more than that, including custom scratch built elements that'll be the centerpiece on this table. That's right, we've also built up a bunch of terrain and painted it up too for our epic board. And Dave and I have both shown off our legions and legios that we'll be using on this board. But today it's time to finish this city board, the administration section and give this Aquila Plaza a home. So we're gonna dive right into kit bashing, scratch building, plastic card work and generally having a good time. It's, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time. What are we up to, Murray? We've got the board here. This is my first time coming in onto the board and Dave has tasked me with setting up all the floor designs for the ground level of the board. So we've got the all the administrative buildings roughly sort of blocked at where they may or may not go. So I'm gonna come up with some designs like sidewalks, maybe some plazas, just those little details to make the city come alive and actually feel like somewhere lived in there. So maybe just a couple of bits of elevation just to raise some buildings and create those sort of focal points. But to make this a lot easier and to allow multiple people to work on it at once and also just to help with modularity, I'm gonna cut the board in half. So I have finished laying out all the pathways, basically blocked out the roads. We're gonna do all the foundations, maybe some raised areas. That'll give a nice bit of variation and interest. However, we want some more unique things. We've got Dave's amazing plaza on that board, but we want some special things on this board. So Jen and I are gonna do some unique projects. So we're up to my favorite part of any board build, and that's putting a ton of texture onto this board. We're gonna use the same method that we did for our floating islands project. So I believe that's flour, salt, and a bit of PVA glue mixed in with just a bit of paint and it'll give us everything we need for a really good foundation. So let's get messy. So I think for a ritzy aristocratic district, I need to elevate this. So I'm actually gonna get another bit of foam and layer it on top, cut it off, glue it on, and that way my bit will be taller than Murray's bit. We're just gonna add a great bit of elevation across the board and really make for an interesting looking city. I think most cities do have districts higher and lower, so it'll work really well. I've got some challenges with this elevation and the first of these is of course the ramps. I need to bring the roads up to the higher elevation. I also need to make sure there's enough areas for vehicles to traverse. So I cut off a section on the left as well that I can put multiple roads going down to ground level. And that way units can move up and down freely. So my big brain is to cut out this little spacer rather than making a million measurements, the 35 mils across, instead I can just go along and mark this. And then as I follow the curve, I only have to use the Aquila to get the curve right and then just match it using this spacer, ensuring it's always 35 mils apart. Unfortunately, the size of the Aquila and dimensions means symmetry is off the table. So I had a decision to make. Do I either cut the ramp on the other side to match where the roads could match up on a modular board or do I have it continue at the tip of the wing, making it symmetrical to the other side? Well, I ended up deciding to make it the most modular I could, deciding on an uglier road configuration where the roads at the end of the Aquila Plaza kind of dog leg off. For the rest of the plan, Plastic card work at the front of the board. I put in these tiled sections to make mass footpaths and built some bridges so there were more areas for units, tanks, and infantry to move up and down from the two different board elevations. I made sure to measure everything to fit an infantry base or at least a medium sized tank. And while the slope is slightly steep, it's just one of the costs of working at this scale. Filled those areas out with foam core to get some rigidity and give those plastic card planks some support. And then I cladded the sides of the board in this nice bit of plastic card with some lined texture, which helps add a whole bunch of variants. So there's some nice variants in the board now, but we get to something that I think is really interesting as YouTubers, where I spend a huge amount of time to create something that, well, it doesn't really become that much in terms of entertainment. Hours and hours poured into cutting bits of plastic card don't equate to, well, minutes and minutes of your entertainment. So while I've probably spent half or more of the time I'm going to spend on this board build, just cutting out and fitting plastic card, as you've seen, it's only been a couple of minutes. So this layer is done. It's time for me to take all of this out, asphalt and putty, and get it drying out in the sun. Thank God Australian summer has finally arrived. 
I'm going to talk about the things that I'm going to put on this board. First of all, we have this little lovely long strip and we're thinking like Las Vegas strip but minus the palm trees. I'm going to copy some of Dave's trees and make the little itty bitty trees and put them on. I think it's going to be super adorable and cute. So I'm going to go ahead and try and make this up and hopefully it looks really cool. Now I'm not a master when it comes to using plastic card. I've only used it a handful of times but hopefully something like this wouldn't be too difficult to make. I also had Dave's design of his plaza to go off so it looked all cohesive when it was on the board. First up I needed to measure everything out and make sure I got the length right. After that I glued some more plastic card together and made a little flower bed. This time I opted to use a pathway plastic card because I thought the bricks would look a bit cooler. But I needed a way to hide all of my messy work so I added on a thicker trim around the base. So this is pretty much dry and ready to be sprayed and painted and I think I'm going to do it in that same terracotta red that Dave has used in his plaza. I also get to go ahead and make a couple of trees. Again, we've done these before a million times, but they're super easy. Just a couple of skewers, just got to cut the tops off, spray them brown, and then I get to use some all game terrain and put some clumps. And I have two different clumps just to give them a bit of variety. So we're going to work through that and then we'll move on to the next step. Yay! Once that was done, I went ahead and glued my trees into my little flower pot and then filled everything in with a texture paste and then a light dry brush just to bring out all of that texture. So this is my little uh, Vegas strip <laughs> of trees and I think it looks really cute. Uh, it's not too flashy, but I think in the area that it's going in, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to look nice. Uh, and I think I've achieved that pretty well. And this is like one of my first times working with plastic cards. So I'm pretty stoked with how this turned out. We've got these dungeon pillars, but if I put them together, build an arch between them, we get a really fancy parade archway for all the citizens to walk through. Now this little mini project on the board is something that all hobbyists dream of. Thinking of a use for some of those parts that were put in a box and pull them out and give them a new lease of life. And so of course the first step is to measure the width of this road because <laughs> if I mess that up everything is going to be off. Then using a drinking cup as a stencil I'm going to cut out a half circle creating the arch effect. So once I've blocked out the archway using some foam core I'm going to start gluing them to the pillars. Filling any gaps I might have with some milliput. Now that was all the boring work done it's time to put all the detail in. And the first step to detailing is breaking up any of the large shapes. But now the faces of the arch are definitely looking just a little bit dull. So I'll use some very fine strips of plastic card and lay them down in a fairly geometric pattern. But this wouldn't be the Imperium without some giant flying banners draped in the wind. So for this I'm just going to cut out some strips using paper, crumpling them up just slightly to make them less uniform. And voila! From nothing we have a high Imperial arch. When it came to painting the archway the first thing I did was prime it black and then give it a strong zenithal with a dark brown colour. This will give me the foundation for a really nice sandstone appearance. I'm going to go for the same bleached theme as some of the buildings but I don't want it to be exactly the same. I want a bit of colour variance to differentiate this archway from the rest of the board. If you're going to put some extra effort into doing a little centrepiece you want it to stand out. So once it's dry from the priming I'm going to go in with a large dry brush. This is going to punch up the saturation. For the long trailing banners I decided to go for a bit more colour as I don't want parchment colours to blend in too much with the rest of the sandstone. And then of course because all your banners and heraldry in the world of Warhammer need script on them I'm going to take a black wash and apply it using that. Now the advantage of using a wash rather than just flat paint is that it's going to be a lot more transparent. The idea here being that it's going to look a lot more faint from a distance. For a final flourish I'll do the Imperial Eagle at the bottom and just like that I finished this completely custom gothic archway for our board. There we go. We have an arch and that almost completes the city I think. So the first focal area I'm going to be looking at is the raised area that the Capitol building is situated on and I'm using two layers of foam core to build this up. This way I can have a nice processional of stairs leading up the front from that Aquila and elevating this impressive building even further will make it stand out as a centerpiece of the table. To get my foundation I grabbed a bit of foam core and folded it over and then to make sure it was nice and well fitted together I used a mix of super glue and PVA glue and then left that to dry. Coming back to this my main focus was on this promenade of stairs carving out an area of foam so I could lay in plastic card steps similar to those I'd used on the Aquila landing. With these done I could build a trim around the outside of the foam capping it off nicely and here I also wanted to include some handrails so people wouldn't fall off. I dry fit the building 
on top as I think we wanna retain some level of modularity to the board in case you wanted to use this building elsewhere. But I did mark out an area in the center where I would be putting some garden paths as well as some grass. And this will be the courtyard area inside that Capitol building. With all these dry, I could add some plasticard strips and some dirt as well onto those and let everything rest. And then it was time to paint where I used stippling methods to bring in all kinds of grays, mixing them in in the same way as I did with the Aquila to create a lot of tonal variation in the concrete. Around the edges, I opted to go for the red coloration of the building itself while leaving the stairwell the same slate stone. I could then dry brush the dirt areas and glue on some nice little tufts of flock and sponge to simulate bushes and grass in this area. Now it's time to bring a little bit of life to my board. And when I wanna do that, I reach for all game terrains products. They have an amazing range of products tailored exactly to you, the Wargamer consumer. I can start with some Super Seal, which is my adhesive of choice for putting on really light elements as you can layer it and put another layer on and let it soak through that flock. And then I'm gonna use their base layer green, which is nicely pre-mixed and works super well for epic scale as grassy fields. I can sprinkle this on top of that Super Tack and get those foundations set. And then I'm gonna add some life, especially to the garden in the center of this administrative building. This is kind of the palace and palaces have lovely gardens and all game terrain makes a range of flower colors that I can sprinkle on as well. And it's not only the products we're using today, they have products suitable for all kinds of boards from badlands, deserts, to flower filled paradises, water effects, base paints, rocks and debris, and anything in between. Go check out All Game Terrain, links are in the description. But with my planter pots, hedgerows, and the garden in the middle of my palace all done, I can take it over the board and see how it's gonna fit. The next project I'm going to tackle is making a little fountain that will go on the administrative part of the board. It's gonna be right where that roundabout is. As I said before, I'm kind of still learning how to use plastic cards, so this is a bit of a challenge for me. But I think I'm gonna cheat just a little bit and I will show you guys how I do it. We did have a lot of leftover terrain from the Legion Imperialis stuff that we had built previously. So this little piece fits perfectly in this fountain, but I think it's a really good mix of looking industrial, but also trying to be unique and kind of beautiful. I did, however, again, want to copy Dave and steal one of the little men for myself. So I grabbed one of the solar auxilia to put on top of the fountain. And this guy looks right at home on his little perch. To give it more of a fountain feature look, Dave and I had discussed doing some pipes that would be coming up from the fountain and have water effects pouring over the top of them. I found a couple of these clear tubes lying around. So I cut these up in various sizes and placed them around the fountain. And this is pretty much where I am up to. I did kind of realize that I should have sprayed this before I put in the clear plastic. So I'm gonna have to hand paint this or mask it. Oops. Oh well, either way, it's time to spray or paint this thing up and then we'll give it a bit of color and then it'll be time for some water effects. After everything was painted red, I went ahead and did the sculpture on top of the fountain, as well as painting in some of the water in the bottom. I gave everything a really quick dry brush just to bring out some of those highlights and then added in a little bit of flock to the base just to hide some of my messy work. Last thing to do was add in some resin effects, which I used with UV resin and curing it. So my fountain is all done and it looks very cute and small and it's kind of adorable in a weird way. Now I think that we're missing something just here. And for that, I'm gonna use this. Another piece of spare printed plastic. This looks really interesting and I'm going to turn this into sort of like a feature park. Somewhere that people can walk around and enjoy the plant life and the bits of lawn. I think that's really nice and that's going to go right here. So that's going to be my next project. I'm going to add some pathways and stairs to that and then some more shrubberies like Dave has also shown in his video. And we're going to do that here. So I'm going to start with a very rich blue and heavily apply that with a dry brush, effectively leaving it only in the deepest corners of this build. Then I'll successively make my way up to dry brushing a really nice electric blue over the top. This will be my foundation of having a really nice watery blue effect. And with that done, now it's time to start painting the terracotta. I decided to go for the same nice rich terracotta of colors that Jen had painted around the rest of the board for all the raised trim on the building foundations. A couple of coats across the entire piece and we'll be set. And while that's drying, I'll just paint the stairs in a nice khaki color to match the sidewalks in the rest of the build. I'll then follow all these areas up with just a little bit of dry brushing on the edges, but trying not to grab too many of the 3D printed textures on the top. Then as a final flourish, I'm gonna glue some flock down to some of the corners to make it really stand out. And then we have yet another completed piece for the board. Jen out here working. 
That's it. All right, well, that looks like a lot of work, so um, I'm gonna dive in and do some painting as well. <laughs> So it's time for me to integrate my lovely plaza onto my board, the last part of the base of the board that isn't painted. And uh, you might be noticing I'm all on my own. Well, we get this question a little bit. Where's Jen? Where's Murray? Where's whoever's not currently in the video? And I thought today was a really good opportunity to just say, well, it's simple. You see, I'm the tabletop time full timer. Jen and Murray both work here part time. And well, we wish they worked here more and things like Space Bear Kickstarter being successful and also our Patreon would open the door to that. But as it stands, we do what we can with what we've got. In his other time, Murray actually works for Jazza, doing things to help Jazza's YouTube channel, production stuff, setting up cameras, all kinds of stuff like that. So I do get to see Murray quite a bit. And Jen, well, uh, she spends her other part of the week running a hobby store. So yeah, occasionally that means I'm all alone to do some stuff. But that's fine. They're gonna be back to finish this project. But I don't know, I was just inspired to share that with you because I see these comments occasionally and I think uh, people don't really know that. That we don't, we're not all here the same amount of time as much as we might love to be. You know, we're variously on camera, variously doing other things. And uh, you've, you've, you've heard enough. You wanna see me do some modeling and such, so yeah. So it's the next day and everyone is all hands on deck to get this board finished. So we're gonna put all of our final pieces together in an epic montage. Now the final step, resin water effects. That's never gone wrong before. Oh, oh uh, uh, it went wrong. It went wrong. Thank you to all of our wonderful patrons who support us. If you'd like to see a behind the scenes vlog every single week and be part of our monthly mini review, consider joining up to our Patreon. It really is the best way to support us to continue to create this kind of content. And we'd also like to thank All Game Terrain for providing us with the awesome flocks and materials we used on this board, including the water effects, which didn't explode, which is awesome. <laughs> so it's done. The end of our epic journey. Our epic administratum board is finished. Hey! Now it's time to do the industrial board, isn't that right, Murray? It sure is. It's not though. Mm. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not gonna do that. At least not now. Uh, and the reason is it's really hard to stay hyped for Legions Imperialis when we can't get the game. Yeah, there's still um, some stock issues. We we can't get it. So we are calling this done. Uh, our hype stays with it and uh, yeah, that industrial board we mentioned, I think we're gonna put on ice. We might come back to it if Games Workshop can fix their stock issues and we can get re-excited about this game that we were so keen for, but it is it is really hard to stay hype when all this other stuff is coming out and we'd rather call it done. We're really happy with this. This is super cool. We can play games with our tiny yeah. forces that we have that we can't expand because we can't buy any more models. The board is now equivalent to what forces we can currently get a hold of, so. <laughs> nice. I have to go fix my hair. Uh -huh. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye. See you later.